How's it? How's it? I have always enjoyed looking at the work of famous photographers and trying to understand their processes, decoding the hidden ideas within their images that they share so freely if only we have the time to look at them. When you do this, when you, when you look at these photographs and you kind of figure out how did they do this? How did they make this effect? Why is it that, why have that, what have they done to create this, this feeling that I really enjoy? Then you go so much closer to being able to create your own style of photography because you become a little bit more like a, like a detective rather than simply just following tutorials about how to recreate something. You're understanding the why, not just the how. So we're going to start off with Joyce Tennyson, who is this, this, I, I adore her photography. And I was, I was introduced to her work when I was uh, just, I was trying to experiment actually with some of my own, trying to copy Nadav Kanda's photography. And I showed it to somebody and they said, oh, I think you're really going to love Joyce Tennyson. And I, I looked at her work and immediately fell in love. And what I'm doing with sharing these images is I, I would like to think about or take you on a journey of how I'm, I look at the photographs and get a feeling for what it is she's doing, going beyond just the aesthetic idea and how she's actually supporting that aesthetic. And, and the first thing that leaps out at me was that the color palette is, is pastels. It's very, it's a little bit muted. So there's nothing too punchy. It's nothing like the, the, that makes the viewer get visually excited, as it were. Then you also have that, that soft focus kind of feel to her work. I, I really, I loved that. I know it was, it was unfashionable at some time to be, you know, soft focus filters, those things they used to make. And there's, there's many ways of, of doing soft focus. And, and especially in today's modern world of like sharpness is sharp, 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 sharp. That I kind of go, all right. So it makes, but it, that softness again, lends itself to that ethereal quality she's building up. And there's a, another aspect to the photography that's not immediately apparent but absolutely reinforces this aesthetic of, of mystical etherealness. And that's her use of, of painting with light. So this is a technique where after you made the exposure, you leave the shutter open, and everything's in darkness, and you add supplementary light to the image using maybe like a torch or a light or a sparkler, something that you know, will add in some extra. You often see it these days, you know, those, those circular halo things that people do with the light torches. But this is, is going beyond that. And, and uh, try as I might, because I've tried to replicate some of this, I look at her work and I go, do you know what, what is she using here? She's, she's, at, she's extremely focused and deliberate in the type of light that she's using to create these images. See, when you start breaking down a photographer's work, you get a little bit of insight into what they're doing and you can maybe pick out some ideas that you then want to employ in your own photography. I love doing deep dives into photographers, looking at their whole body of work, really getting into it and, and discussing what exactly is that intangible in a photographer's images that resonates with us so much. I have a Patreon account where you can support the channel and one of the tiers I create a monthly deep dive into a photographer's specific body of work. If you would like to find out more about this page on how you can support the channel, there is a link in the description box below. This is one of my favorite photographers and you may have noticed I'm putting my hand over this young lady because I have no idea these days what YouTube decides is, is suitable content for, you know, all that sort of stuff. But there's a whole other discussion. Vincent Peters, I have talked about his photography in the past. He is an example, it's more of a technical idea. Much like with Joyce Tennyson, where I was kind of sort of thinking about the technical aspects of things and how they created a, a, a feeling of, of mystery and intrigue and, and etherealness. When I'm looking at Vincent Peters, I'm kind of going, do you know what, there's a whole different vibe here. It's for him, and or for me, rather when I look at it, it's about his use of light 
His use of light, I feel, is absolutely stunning. It, he understands how to use hard light. He understands when to use soft light. It is a reminder to me, if I wanted to encourage myself to, to kind of get this feeling in my photographs, that, all right, what, what's, what's he doing? First of all, okay, it's so the light, all right. So what is he doing? How is the light created? Now, some of the work, I know that it's made with those big sort of like movie Fresnel lens things. They give a very focused, soft light, which is a very kind of weird way of saying it. It's, it's not like a very hard angular light, but it's a soft light that's been focused because of the Fresnel lens, which I'm sure is probably a terrible way of explaining it. But it gives you these very sharp defined shadows without it being this kind of weird, unpleasant looking light. So then, you know, he knows when to use those. He's knowing when to also employ light to shape a form and a texture, make things a little bit softer. And consequently, what I'm getting from this is it feels theatrical. <laughs> I don't know if that's probably the best way of explaining it. But the, the tonality of his work, the use of the color, it, it's got a, it, it definitely feels, as you look at all his photographs, as we do with, with all the people who we look at, that they have a feeling, they have a style. And once you get into their work and you start looking at it from beyond, oh, that's Dennis Hopper, or oh, this is, you know, Emma Watson, or, you know, any of those aspects, you start to really think about how the images are created. And the more that you do that, the more it gives you the tools to inform your own photography, to take, okay, well, I now I'm looking at this, I, I've got a better idea of what it is that I want to say or get forth in my images. The next photographer is Mary Ellen Mark, and she's most well known for documentary photography. There was a series that she did on a, a young lady called Tiny, and this particular volume is Mary Ellen Mark photographing on set. It's all film stars and, and what have you. So when I look at these images, what I see is certainly a, a feel of, of narrative, of, of story. Obviously, we are familiar with a lot of the people whose images are in this book, so we kind of add things in. But it gives me a bit of a, of, of a glimpse, as the book has suggested, into the on, on set <laughs> ideas, you know, what's been going on behind famous movies. And I, I like that as a, as, a, as a concept. But what I kind of get from this, what I draw from my own photography when I'm looking at, at her work, is that she's treating these on set photographs as if she were documenting the people that she would see on the street and things of that nature. So it lends them not a, I suppose, somewhat polished and, you know, contrived idea of, of you know, actors doing PR shots, but they, it gives them a sense of realness. When I, you know, that is just, there's a picture here that I've just seen of Dennis Hopper, and he has a, a tiny tin. I really hope that I can find it. I'm going to hold it up there. And I've, I've been struck by this image. This is, this is a portrait. This is a man who's he's in character. This is on the set of Apocalypse Now, where he plays that famous lunatic photojournalist. But that is, that's not a PR shot. That's not a photograph that somebody made to promote the film. Harkens back to that quote by Robert Kappa, that if your photographs aren't good enough, then you're not close enough. And I've always felt that that means that you should be emotionally close, not just, just physically in their face. Take some time, look at the work of a photographer who's, who's, whose images really resonate with you, and see what you can find within there. What kind of these, when you start you're decoding their messages to you, what do you find? Vincent Peters, there's a whole story about what happened when Shalise Theron said absolutely no, she wasn't going to do something at the photo shoot. Check out the story over here. I know you're going to love it. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.